Hi and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're going to love today's video because I'm going to review GS Pro for the second time after I've owned the software for five months now. So I'm going to move pretty quickly. Uh, you can always pause it or rewind it, obviously. The first thing I want to go over is the PC specifications and recommendations that I have based on my experience and my failures. Let's get right into it. As you look at the graphic on the screen, look to the left. This is from GS Pro's website. So the minimum and recommended system requirements that GS Pro has are all right here. Now it does require you to have a Windows PC. So you're gonna need to have Windows 10 or Windows 11. That's not optional. Just below that, you'll see that there is a recommended minimum hardware for 1080p play. So you're gonna to wanna to have 10 gig of free space a GTX 1070 or higher, 16 gig of memory, a stable internet connection, and that's gonna be for all versions of this, all levels of it. And then you're gonna to need to have an ethernet port and or Bluetooth depending upon your launch monitor. Now, they just updated this in the last two weeks. I just did a video for my recommendations on the settings for Bluetooth and the PC and it's been updated since then. So they went from four gig of free space to 10, from like a 970 to a 1070. They went from eight gig of memory to 16 gig of memory. And I think that's probably because a lot of the golf courses are starting to use a lot more memory. So if you only have eight gig of RAM, I just don't think it's gonna work properly. And quite frankly, if you don't go to the second level, I think you're gonna be in the long run disappointed like I was. All right, let's look in the middle there with the green box. So the recommended hardware for a great 1080p experience is 20 gig of free space, an RTX 3060 Ti, that's NVIDIA for the GPU, and then 16 gig of memory. And then below that, the recommended hardware for a great 4K experience is 20 gig of free space, an RTX 3080 or better GPU, and 32 gig of memory. Now, looking back at their recommended hardware, I 100% agree because initially I had bought a laptop that had an AMD CPU, which was fine. The processor was fine. The problem was the GPU. It only had four gig of GDDR6. And I think you really should have like at least over six gig of video memory or GDDR6 uh, because my current computer is this. Looking at the right is my specs. The processor again is fine. So whether you have the AMD version or the i7, it doesn't matter. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti is exactly what GS Pro recommends. I have a one terabyte solid state drive and I have 32 gig of RAM. So even though they say the recommended hardware for a great 1080 experience is the 16 gig, I think you could probably get away with that. But to help future proof it, I think having 32 gig of RAM is a better option for you, um, unless you're gonna go with 4K and then obviously you're gonna wanna go with like the 3080 or 4080. Uh, you know, they have those out now, the, the 40 series. Okay, moving on. So. You could output GS Pro to a projector using a full golf simulator with an enclosure and all that good stuff. Uh, or you could use it with, you know, a monitor or a TV hitting it into a net if you choose to do that. OK, uh, as far as the launch monitors that GS Pro is currently compatible with, there are a lot. I'm going to put this graphic up on the screen and it can be a confusing situation. So I'll explain all of it. All right, so looking at the graphic, GS Pro officially supports Uniker, Foresight Sports, Bushnell Golf, and FlightScope. The official supported launch monitors are the Uniker iXO, the Uniker iXO2, the Uniker iMini, the Uniker QED, the FlightScope Mevo Plus, the FlightScope XI, the FlightScope X2, the FlightScope X3, the Foresight GC3, the Foresight GC Quad, the Foresight GC Hawk, and the Bushnell Launch Pro. Okay, so the next two 
are not officially supported by GS Pro. However, they are open API, that is the software. So that means people can write programs and they can design golf courses for this software. In fact, they're all developed by the users themselves. So looking back at the graphic, you'll see I have the yellow box around open API. So the Garmin R10 is supported. That is what I use with mine. There is a connector that you can get on GitHub. And then also the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro can also work with it. There are many people that use that. And there is also a connector for that as well. So they have an API open interface. So it's probably going to grow as we move forward. Now also with your software, I think you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of speaker, whether you have a launch monitor set up with a golf simulator with a, you know, a full enclosure, or if you're just using a TV, obviously you've got the speaker there. But with a monitor or with an enclosure, you're gonna to wanna to have some kind of speaker because there are ambient sounds. You've got water splashes when the ball hits the, the green, if it hits the pin, if it goes in the hole, there's a lot of things, crowd noises, commentary, so I think that's pretty important to have. It helps with the immersiveness with the software. So before I give you my opinion on what I like and dislike about GS Pro, I'm gonna go through all the different features in GS Pro very quickly, and then I'll show you some course play using Prairie Knolls, which is one of my favorite golf courses. It's a newer golf course on GS Pro. I believe it to be a top five golf course that's out there right now. Let's get right into it. All right, what you're looking at here is the welcome screen for GS Pro. From here, you can play local matches, practice, tournaments, or online matches. Local matches, let's go into that first. Here's some of the golf courses that I have downloaded. I have more downloaded on the computer where my golf simulator is. So let's go to DPC Sawgrass, which is actually TPC Sawgrass. And we'll go to the famous uh, hole number 17. So let's just select that and get you fired up here. All right, so what you're looking at here is hole number 17 at DPC Sodgrass, the very, very famous island hole that everybody kind of wants to see or play. Now, I'm not gonna go over all the settings because I already have a video with that and I'll put that in the end credits that will pop up. So you can click on that if you wanna see all of the settings. Um, if you wanna look at some of the settings, you're gonna go in the upper right hand corner and click on that and you can change all that within game. And then as far as like the controls, there's a whole shortcut menu. Um, let me show you a flyover here so you kind of see graphically just how amazing this software is. Check out the water, the detail of the trees, the grass, everything, just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so let's leave that and let's take a look at the practice area. First thing we'll do is go to the driving range. And here we are. Again, this is in ultra. It certainly looks much better with the shadows, the cliffs, the waterfalls and all that with ultra. Initially, when I was playing it on GS Pro Lite, it just wasn't the same. So let's do a flyover on the driving range. Just absolutely awesome. You can set custom distances as well. So like if you want to practice your nine iron at 145, you can set the distance at 145 and that circle will be at 145. All right, let's leave there. So the other things you have is on course practice. You have operation 36. That's more for beginner golfers. It's a new feature. You have a custom skills test and you also have a standard skills test. Going down to the bottom left, there are tournaments. I don't have any tournaments loaded here because they're all on my other computer for my golf simulator. I do play on the simulator golf tour or SGT. Online matches, you can set up an online match with somebody that is not in your house, like a friend or anybody really. And from here, you can go to the settings menu and set everything up as you wish. Now here's some course play using GS Pro on Prairie Knolls.
a little too much on that one. All right, get in the hole. Not quite. All right, so that'll give me a par. All right. Hopefully it'll jump back up to the fairway. No, not quite. That's perfect. Get in there. Well, that's not gonna make the circle, but, so that'll two putt me from there. Hopefully that holds the fairway. Come on. All right, that's in good shape. Right in the bunker. Grab my 60 degree, see if we can get this thing close. I do not like bunker shots. Stop, 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 stop. Nice shot. All right, so about the things that I like and don't like, there's only one thing that I don't like. Only one thing. And that is that GS Pro uses a lot of system resources. So don't make the mistake like I did. I bought a laptop and I thought it was gonna be powerful enough and it just wasn't. I upgraded the RAM. I actually did a video about it from 16 gig to 32 gig and it worked better. Uh, so I was able to play higher levels of graphics. Uh, I went from being able to play, you know, GS Pro Lite up to medium or maybe high on some golf courses. However, as soon as I switched to this other PC with the 3060 Ti NVIDIA GPU, it runs flawlessly on every golf course in ultra, the highest graphic setting. So very, very important that you understand that if you're going to get GS Pro, it's going to use system resources. You're gonna to wanna to have a good computer. Barring that, here are the things that I like and love. I love the realism of the software. I think it's the best out there. They have over 500 golf courses right now, and there are real world golf courses on GS Pro. Ones that you want to play and that I want to play every day. Number two, 4K resolution is available. So if your projector is capable and your computer is capable or your TV or your monitor or whatever, then 4K is available for GS Pro, which is very cool. And eventually I'll graduate to that. But 1080p is just fine, believe me. Number three, open API. I can use it with a reasonably priced launch monitor. I bought my Garmin R10 for $599. The Garmin is very accurate with iron play. Uh, it's not as accurate with the spin rates and all that stuff. Uh, you can use RCT balls or use stickers to make it better with the driver. So the driver may not be as accurate, especially with side spin, um, but it's, it's pretty accurate overall, uh, as well as like the, the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. Um, do I want a higher end launch monitor? Sure, I'd like to have one, but at this point, I'm not really willing to pay three, four, five thousand dollars or even more for some of the supported uh, launch monitors that GS Pro officially supports. With the Garmin, there's just basically no hoops to jump through once you get it set up. There's a free connector that you can get on GitHub and uh, it really has worked perfectly, very rarely disconnects and I'm very happy with it. All right, number four, on-course practice. I love the on-course practice. So you can Practice from the tee over and over and over again. You can put the ball in a bunker. You can set the ball anywhere on that hole, any hole on hundreds of golf courses that you want to practice at. That is fantastic for practice rather than repeatedly hitting it on the same driving range, which we've already gone through when I demoed the software. Um, number five, you've got real world golf courses, which we talked about. And some of the softwares that are out there, they don't have that or a whole lot of that. And I, I just love the ability for the catalog to continually change. There's several golf courses usually being released every single week, which is amazing. 
And lastly, the price. The price is $250 a year for a subscription, which is very fair in my opinion for what you're getting. Take a look at some of the prices at some of the software that is out there and they don't have the option to have a subscription sometimes or if they do, you only get a portion of it. Well, this you get the whole deal. And I just think, you know, I actually have two subscriptions. I have one for my upstairs computer so I can do demos and so I can do videos and practice and learn the golf courses before I play in SGT tournaments. And uh, you know, th that's fantastic. Well, that about wraps it up for today. I certainly do appreciate you watching today. Please go ahead and hit that like button. It would certainly help out the channel if you do so. And also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you get notified for future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.